Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how and why to use makefiles with Go. We will build something, uh, run it, compile it, do a cross compile, show you how I use makefiles as a generic task runner. And if you stay all the way to the end of the video, which is pretty short, actually, I'll, I'll share with you why I think makefiles are still a great solution in a modern development world. All right, so here is my code. It's just a simple hello world or a hey. What I'm going to do, I'll just show you how I build it and run it and stuff, and then we'll uh, do the same thing, but inside of a makefile. This is my terminal down here, by the way. To run this, I can just do go run main.go. Simple enough. Building it uh, is a little bit more involved when I want to specify a specific target. So what I do is use this dash o to just say I want a file called hello world, and then I can run it and you get a hello world. Nothing too surprising there, right? Like that's just standard stuff. When I want to actually release my hello world program, uh, take over the world, then I'm gonna need some different versions of it, right? I'm on Mac, but I probably will want a Windows binary and you know, probably a Linux binary. And so that's super easy in Go. So I would just do that like this. I'm specifying that the OS is Linux. And then when I want to try to run that, I can do this and it's not gonna work, right? It's, it's not built for my environment. And I can repeat this process if I wanna do Windows. I can just change this to Windows and so on. And I can see here, I think I just called that Linux, but that's actually the Windows one. So I, I have an actual test. Uh, where's my test? I have a, a test here. It's actually unrelated to my hello world, but I just wanted to show here's my test. It tests this method and I can run it here. Although nothing's changed, so it won't run it. Let's try that out. Now, the nice thing about a make file is that I can organize all these things uh, in sort of like a task runner method. So let me show you my make file. So first of all, I added this build target. So the, the structure of a make file is like target name, which can often be a file. And then you list like prereqs, prereq one, prereq two. And down here you have a tab and then you have a recipe, basically a bunch of steps of, you know, whatever happens here. So the, the first target that I put together is my build target, which is, is just the build steps I was doing before. I'm going to do a Darwin build, a Linux build, and then a Windows build. And just to make this nice and, and easy to change or remove a bit of duplication, I, I put my binary name up there. So that's my, my very first part of my makefile. And to run that, uh, let's just clear this. In my makefile, I just call build. I do make build, and then I can see my results there. All right, nice and simple. Once I build my binary, I want to run it. And so I put that here, I put build as a dependency, and then I'm going to run Darwin because of where I am. And the, the nice thing about this is because this is listed here as a prerequisite, it's always going to run this step if it needs to uh, before running this. So I can do this run and it builds all three files and then runs my version, which is pretty nice. I have this build and run step, which I don't think I actually need because I, I've put build as a prerequisite. And then uh, another thing I've done is just put together this clean where I can remove all these steps with clean, right? And just to prove the point I was saying before, now if I run the run, this target doesn't actually exist. So what is going to happen? You can see that it actually builds them because I have a prerequisite of build. I've set up a default goal. So this is really nice. It just lets me say make. And since I've set that to run, that'll cause run, which will cause the build and do a cross compile. But pretty nice. I mean, somebody can jump into your project, not know much about it, and just have a make script to run. You can just do make and they're all set. One thing to note about make files that perhaps isn't too tricky for people who write Go, but maybe for other languages, make requires tabs. You can't, you can't use soft tabs. You need hard tabs. If I change this, um, you can see that was a tab there. I've changed it to a space. And now if I do make build, uh, it gets confused. Right? It, it doesn't see the tab there, so it doesn't think there's a recipe. It thinks it's looking at something like this with nothing there. So important caveat for makefiles, always use hard tabs or it's just not going to work. 
The other thing I like to do with make is just, I just put everything in here that I need to do with my project. So it's using it kind of not so much as a build tool, but as a task runner. So I have my test here to run my tests and my coverage tests and my go mod download and, and vet finds problems. And this is a linter so that I can go lint. Oh, sorry, make lint and, and run my linter and it'll probably find some problems. Ooh, it found quite a few actually. So maybe that's something I wanna look at. Turn statements should not be cuddled if the block is more than two lines. So this tends to be how I use make. Uh, I'm not writing C code where I need to tell the compiler to build each file and put together object files. I am just using it to execute the compiler and to task run various things. But it's very nice, these dependencies that it has. And I don't know, I'm just a big fan of, of using make files in this way. The thing I like about make files, they, they can get quite complex uh, if you're building like a really large C project. But if you're, you're just trying to do uh, this type of stuff, using it as a task runner and to do some light automation around a project, it can be really nice. And once you learn it, um, you'll know it for a long time. Like make's not going anywhere. It's been around for a long time. It, it possibly is decreasing in popularity. Uh, but not inside the the Go community where it seems to be used quite a bit. So I, I love when you can learn something and it's simple and, and not too complex. And then you get to use that skill, you know, on and on and on. It's a great investment in, in my development skills and yours too. Oh, the, the other thing is there is actually, if you use VS Code, there's actually a, a make file uh, extension, which is pretty nice, right? All it does is give you some of these nice buttons if you want to have the build step called build, you can do that. And then when you hit this build button, uh, you can see that it does the build tasks and you can do the same for run. I think you can hook in a debugger. I'm not entirely certain how that works, but it's pretty easy to integrate make into whatever your workflow is. So that's how you use make with Golang. If there's other tips that you have, uh, about using make files with Go, please let me know. Another thing I might recommend you check out as well is Earthly. I work for Earthly. It's an open source build tool. It's very similar to make, but it's modernized. It is containerized. So you can list, you know, operating system level dependencies and, and sort of build anything in it that you would normally build in CI. I like to think of it as just a really nice way to have your CI runnable on your local host and runnable regardless of what your machine is, whether it's Windows or Linux or, or Mac. So check that out. There is a link in the description of this video, earthly.dev. I work for Earthly. And if you want to hear more stuff about programming, uh, subscribe to this channel or like it or whatever. Take care.